welcome to Unexplained Possibilities Podcast. I'm your host, Melvin the Crimson Taurus, and with me today is, of course, my co-host, the dealer of mystic goods, the third-eyed mystic herself, and the happiest of sad girls, the ever-so-lovely Niema. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So, as you guys can hear, Miyama's mic got punched in the throat, but at least you can hear her. It's just a little yep. cloudy. But, uh, Niema, guess what? Did you say, What mm? happened? What? what? <laughs> Are you not paying attention? Am I boring you already? I, no, I, I said, what happened? What's up? Okay, well, you know we're not alone today, right? Yes, I do know. I just want you to know this, but that's okay. Um, Yes, we're not alone. We have a guest, and if you can read the title, you'd know this. And she's quite the guest indeed. She's actually a really cool young woman, and we're happy to have her on. So, should I introduce her, Niema? Yes, you should. (laughs) Please do. Joining us for the first, and hopefully not the last time is a woman who can see beyond the veil, beyond that of which separates us from the spiritual world. Not only can she see beyond, but she can also communicate with these energies that reside elsewhere. Oh, and she can see pretty colors that appear around people. Please welcome psychic medium, Jackie. Hello, everybody. Thank you guys so much for having me on today. I'm very excited. Thank you for coming on. Like, we're happy to have you, and we're going to get into some stuff. Awesome. (laughs) Jackie, I got to know, and this is something I've always wondered with a lot of folks who are psychic medium. Do you actually like being called psychic medium? Like, is that annoying, or you just, whatever, whatever. So that's a really great question, actually, because I feel like I actually struggled with that for a really long time. Um, I hated calling myself a psychic. I hated calling myself a medium. I started just calling myself um, somebody that was intuitive, that could uh, see auras. And that's kind of what I stuck with for a while. But uh, I started doing this work and you really have to have like a very solid sense of self when you do this work. And I really had to work through, um, I don't know, feeling like that those words were so stigmatized because they are, you know, you hear psychic and you think of a little old lady with a crystal ball that's trying to take all of your money. But I started to realize that, you know, by calling myself a psychic medium, I was really taking back my own power. And I know that I'm doing this work to help as many people as possible. So that's part of the reason actually why I like being called a psychic medium now because I feel like I'm helping to kind of destigmatize those words. Okay. That, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. All right, cuz I I speak to yeah. I speak to a few other people and sometimes they just they don't like being called the psychic or medium and um we we spoke briefly about this person. I won't say names, but uh, Bonnie actually <sighs> hates being called a psychic medium now because of said person. So <clears throat> now you're like, who's yeah, Bonnie? A lot of... Which is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. What were you saying? Oh, no, you're totally fine. Um, I was just saying, you know, there's a lot of shame around those words because of the people that are out there that are doing this to scam people and that are, are doing this to kind of just their egos a little bit hmm oh you know what that actually was gonna i was gonna go somewhere else but before that how do you feel about people who are using the uh the esp field as a form of obtaining money and scamming people like how does that personally make you feel so obviously it makes me extremely angry um because I do believe that there are a lot of people that are intuitive and truly understand that, you know, having these gifts is a responsibility and that we can use them to really better the world. Um, 
but obviously you're always going to have a few bad eggs out there and um you know i don't know it just i definitely think that there is a lot of like a lot of people have differing opinions about whether people that are psychic should even be charging money in the first place because we have been given this gift by God and we should just share it for free with everybody. So that's maybe a different topic that we could get into. Um, but I definitely get a little bit uh, sad when I see that people have been scammed or, you know, told wrong information or have used their abilities to kind of spread fear um, because that's the complete opposite of what a real psychic or a real medium is trying to do. We're all just trying to spread, you know, as much healing and positivity and light as possible. So the one or two people that are out there using this to just scam people and take their money really, really deters us from being able to help more people, I think, because you hear psychic and you're like, oh, no, they're just going to take my money or they're going to tell me I'm going to die soon or they're going to tell me I have a hex on myself and I have to get it removed or something. So, yeah. Okay. And that actually is going to lead into this one real quick. What about people who believe themselves to be a psychic, a medium, a channeler, whatever you want to call it? I mean, I know those are separate things, but we'll just say they have ESP. What about those who think they have it, but they don't, and they're trying to help people, but perhaps they're doing more harm than good? What, what do you say? What do you feel about them, and oh, what would you wow. say to them? Wow, that is a really great question. I've actually, I've actually never thought about that before. Um, but I think that, ooh, man, wow, Mel, hit me with, hit me with one out of right field there. Um, I don't really know how I feel about that, honestly, because, you know, the intention to help is there, obviously. Um, but if I feel like you know when you are accurately receiving information or you're accurately picking up on something because the person that you're giving the reading to should be able to immediately confirm it, especially if it's specific information. Like, that's how you know that you are legit. You're really picking up on um this person's energy or their you know psychic information stuff like that but if if you are somebody that thinks you're a channeler or psychic but you aren't I have never come across that before actually Hmm. I don't really know how I feel I definitely think that their heart is probably in the right place but I'm not I'm not sure how I feel about that actually you know something to ponder now yeah all right uh, Nia Marie, you can read, say something. Is that, uh, did you, were you kind of referring to that one person that we just discussed? That um, kind of just like may project that they're one thing, but they're truly not? Partially. Okay. I was trying to reference it. Like, maybe do I know someone that's like that or can I relate it to something? But I'm like, oh, okay, he probably means that person. <laughs> in her, if we're talking about the person that we were talking about earlier, I think in her case, obviously she is trying to help people, but it sounds like she's causing more harm than good, especially because she's spreading so much fear. Um, and if you're not picking up on accurate information or specific information, then you really aren't picking up on like psychic information that is real you know that's how you know you're really picking up on something is if it's specific the person that you're doing the reading for can for sure confirm it like there's so many different little checklists that you have to go through to really know that you're picking up on information correctly and so in her case it seems like she might be doing a little bit of you know fear-mongering there Mm, you Hmm. have no idea how accurate you are um (laughs) okay so Okay. Uh, Jackie, let's talk about you. Like, tell us about yourself and when you came to realize that you had this ability to feel energy and channel and see colors. I say see colors. I should say auras, but I'm informal. So see colors. <laughs> like, tell us about this. Yeah. I, I want to know how you like came into it, how you started recognizing it and then kind of just developed it and started using it. Sure, absolutely. So 
I got very, very lucky. Um, I was born into a very, very supportive and open-minded family. So when I was around five years old and I started seeing colors around people and objects and animals, um, I actually went to my mom and I was like, what are these colors? Like, why am I seeing these, these things around people? What what does this mean? Why can I look at a dog and see, you know, blue around it? What What's going on? And lucky for me, um, she had actually experienced this with my older sister. And my older sister had seen auras and colors and felt energy when she was very young. So that kind of led my mom down a path of research, and she started researching um, energy and astral projection and Reiki, all of these different kind of uh, healing and energy modalities that we all kind of know today in the spiritual community. And so when I went to her when I was five years old and I asked her what was going on, she had an answer for me. And that is something that a lot of people, I feel like, don't really get <laughs> to experience, like, when they're going through this stuff and they start seeing colors, they immediately go, oh, my gosh, I'm crazy. What's going on? And they <sighs> close down. Yeah. yeah. So so I got really lucky because my older sister kind of paved the way for me to ask up a conversation. Um, so knowing that, I started to view it more as a superpower than, you know, a detriment and in um, middle school and stuff, it started to get a little bit overwhelming. Um, I would see colors while I was walking down the hallway. I didn't really know how to turn it on and off. And I actually began getting really sick um, around that time. So I had chronic migraines for a really, really long time from like probably age 12 to 20 and during that time, I completely shut down with my abilities, like wasn't seeing auras, was just kind of like trying to survive basically through this chronic pain that I was experiencing. But during that time, I had a lot of free time to just kind of research, you know, energy and research spirituality and do all of that stuff. So while I was you know, feeling okay in between bouts of this chronic pain, I was looking up stuff and just trying to understand, you know, what exactly it was that I had, like, why I was being able to, like, feel auras and see auras and pick up on all of this stuff and could everybody do it and all of these different questions. So that kind of eight-year period gave me a lot of time for introspection and um, kind of building up my sense of self so that when I hit 20, um, I was able to start actually kind of like embrace my gifts and use it to to better the world. So that's kind of how I got to, um, you know, my, I don't know, my young adulthood age. And then um, after I was 20, the migraines went away from treatment um, with acupuncture. And I really started to just dive into my abilities. Like, head first because I knew that if I could learn how to hone this, I could help a lot of people. So I started doing aura readings, which evolved into psychic readings, which evolved into me being able to pick up on people's loved ones in the room. And I was surprising myself by, you know, the information that was coming through and didn't understand how quickly this was going to evolve, actually, once I started to just dive into it. So that is kind of how I got to this place that I am today. Um, but yeah, definitely all started all, uh, when I was younger and I got very lucky with my family. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You um, put a giant smile on my face and Niema might have caught it too when you said that you suffered from migraines. And I mean, yeah. I'm not smiling because you <laughs> suffered from migraines. That's so. terrible. But <laughs> yeah. But I say that. Yeah. And I'm jumping the gun here, but I, I say that because literally, like, a couple of days ago, right, Nima, I asked if you, right. if you suffered from migraines and headaches, and I was wondering if that has to do with, um, um, with how we perceive certain energies, and if it's, like, us opening up to the spiritual side of things, and... 
I've literally been asking around and trying to get information on if people who are psychic suffered at one point from headaches, migraines. And for you to say that, it just put a big smile on my face. Yeah, that's that is so interesting. So, yeah, I'll give you a little I'll give you my perspective on that. Um, There's actually two things that I would say to people that uh, I don't know, that experience migraines and also kind of have psychic abilities as well. So the first thing is that a lot of times um, when a healer is starting to kind of open up or they have gifts that have been repressed or they haven't fully like accepted themselves um, and their abilities, they will experience some type of chronic pain or chronic illness. And now this isn't for everyone, obviously, but for some people that are intuitive as well, um, that are going through chronic pain or chronic illness, it can be because of this repression that we kind of go through of those abilities. So that's the first thing. Um, And that is something that I've noticed with a lot of Uh, psychics and even a couple of mediums that I know that have gone through these bouts of you know having a chronic illness for six or seven years and then coming out of it and like emerging like and being able to uh, embrace their gifts so very interesting sort of pattern that I've seen there Uh, the other thing is that when we have psychic energy flowing through our body okay we've got seven chakras, seven main chakras that run down the front of the body. You've got your third eye, which is smack dab in the middle of your forehead. And you've got your crown chakra, which is at the top of your head. So when we start to open up to our psychic abilities, those chakras, if they're not kept in check, can become unbalanced and can start to cause actual physical symptoms and physical problems to start in the neck and head region. Um, so yeah, if somebody is opening up and they don't have an outlet for their psychic energy or they don't know how to properly ground themselves, um, you know, X, Y, or Z, uh, I could go on and on and on, but basically those are the two main things. If they aren't able to kind of get that energy out in one way or another, they may start to have actual physical symptoms and physical problems that have started on an energetic level in those chakras. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Mia, any of this uh, hitting you? <laughs> of course. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, like I said, um, I think I've told Melvin, it just, I felt like before I started to see colors on people, I would have really intense headaches and I just felt like information overload. Like I really couldn't control it. Yeah. So that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, especially when, you know, you're first starting to open up and you're not really sure what to do with all of that information and you go out and you're sensitive to the energies around you. You can like inadvertently absorb, you know, other people's energy if you're empathic and if you're picking up on stuff and it doesn't have anywhere to go and there's no way to like channel it out with a reading or, you know, whatever. It's it can become really overwhelming for your physical body, too. So very interesting. So I heard you mention that you kind of know how to turn it off and on. Can you go into more detail about that? Like, how do you do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have been doing this work professionally for a while now. So I, it's definitely different than when I first started because now I can sit down, you know, five minutes before a reading and just kind of like make it my intention to turn my abilities on to connect to the person's energy or to connect to spirit. But when I was first starting, um, I was overwhelmed (laughs) with everything that I was picking up on. So I actually made like an open and closed sign, like a metaphorical open and closed sign for when I wanted to pick up on energy and when I didn't. So this is really, really easy. um, And you can use um, like a piece of uh, jewelry. So when you have the piece of jewelry on, you know, that's when you're connecting with spirit or psychic energy or auras. And when you have uh, taken the jewelry off, that's when, you know, you tell spirit that you're closed for the day, you're not working. I actually started using a candle, a specific cover- colored candle um, when I first started doing uh, psychic readings and stuff because 
I don't know. It just made me feel like I was actually like turning on an open sign by like lighting the candle. Like, all right, spirit, okay. ready to connect. So you just have to like make it your intention um, with your spirit guides and with yourself to have this, you know, piece of, you know, jewelry or um, item to kind of like signal that you're on or you're off. And then that will kind of be something that your spirit guides will use to, I don't know, send you information and stuff like that when it is on. Okay. Does that make sense? (laughs) I hope I explained that. Yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, Angie actually has a question for you, Jackie. I hope you don't mind answering it. Uh, She asks, and this is going to be a tough one. So do you think you were given this gift by God or do you think you have that gift because of what happened in your past life? Wow, that is an amazing question. Um, and right off the bat, I'm going to say I have no idea. Uh, but I would like to just kind of share kind of what I feel. I definitely feel like this is a gift um, from God or spirit or, you know, the universe. Um And I do think past lives can play into that. So if you were intuitive in a past life or, you know, um, sort of like a spiritual person in a past life, I do think that some of that can transfer over to your current life. But yeah, I definitely think that this is a gift from God um, or just a gift in general. And, you know, the way we use it is uh, kind of up to us. So. Okay, that works. Hope that's good enough for you, Angie. Don't don't worry, it is. I'm just funny, as they say. So, with being able to see energy, sense it, feel it, have you ever come across something where, like, the person might be an okay guy, but their energy is just off, and you and they repel you, and it's like I don't want to go near you, even though. They seem like they're okay. So how do you deal with that? Oh, gosh. Um, That is also a great question. Um, I feel like there are a couple of things that I do when I I kind of experience somebody that has a little bit more of a heavy energy. Um, So the first thing I do is I, I actually try to, like, ask them if there's something going on, especially if it's a friend. Um, I've had this happen before where a friend has kind of been around me and they've had a heavier energy and I've just kind of been like so how are you doing and by just opening up the conversation to them to talk about something that's going on that kind of relieves that energy um, around them which is amazing because that's something that literally anybody can do um, if you feel that somebody around you has a little bit more of a heavier energy that day but for the most part um yeah, I, I don't know. I usually just try to talk to them and, and comfort them if I can. Um, I don't usually bring up like, hey, your energy is super gray today uh, because nobody's going to nobody's gonna be excited to hear that. But I definitely do use that as a tool and see if I can open up some line of communication with them to see if they can get talking and maybe relieve some of that stress or that energy. Okay, so you're smart about it. You see, I would have been the moron. You're (laughs) off. What's wrong with you? (laughs) I mean, don't get me wrong. I've definitely, like, said that to a couple of friends before. If I'm close enough with them, I'll be like, yo, like, what's going on? And just kind of dig it out of them. But for the most part, if it's somebody that's more of an acquaintance or a friend that I don't really know that well, I'll just kind of be a little sneaky about it. Okay. So that's what was going on with you and Niamh. Got it. (laughs) Emma, your energy's <laughs> off. <laughs> totally. No, but it's, it's good to know because I can only imagine that, you know, sometimes when you're just trying to enjoy ice cream sundae and someone comes along, minding their own business, but that energy hits you and it's just like, oh. Yeah, Um, I actually, I started commuting on the train and there were days that I would have people come and sit down next to me and it was like I could feel their sadness or their grief or their anger about their job or a loved one. And so that's really where that on and off switch comes in handy too because 
I can't be walking around, you know, fully open uh, like I would be for a reading because it just it becomes too much. It's too overwhelming. I don't want to look at people and see their pain when I'm out at Walmart trying to grab groceries or something. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Oh, yeah. especially in this time. Yeah, for sure. What about someone who has really good energy and you're almost drawn to them? Does that happen to where you just come across someone and it's like, ooh, I'm like a um, a moth to a flame. You just like, I want to go over here. <laughs> Does that ever Oh happen? my gosh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's so funny. Um, I have an example, uh, not a personal one for me, but there are these two friends that I have and they are both very distinctly green and light blue energy and they are like two peas in a pod um and when you see them together it's just like this beautiful like melding of of energy and like friendship and you can feel i don't know you can just feel it radiate off of them so yes there's definitely people that i know that i am drawn to and i know that other people can be drawn to um people of like colors almost like if you have a very green energy you might be drawn to other green people or if you have very purple energy you're going to be drawn to other purple people so um yeah that's something i've noticed that's sure. very interesting you say that because um Niema has a thing for purple yeah oh, really hmm. yeah and that's a color i see a lot on my friends <laughs> Oh my gosh, funny. I love that so much. <laughs> that is very interesting. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Angie has another question. This one's a little sure. morbid, but okay. Okay. Have you ever... Oh, I don't want to say this one, Angie, but I know you're going to nag at me if I don't. <laughs> Have you ever felt energy of someone suicidal or someone who perhaps is mentally sick in a sense of borderline psychopath? Um, wow, this is really interesting because this is something that I actually have experienced. Um, and again, opening a line of communication with that person or uh, just kind of letting them know extra that you are there for them, that you, um, you know, are here if they need a friend, kind of using that as a tool to help you nav navigate communication is really important but also with the that's more of the like really sad depressed you know borderline suicidal people and with people that are um psychopaths i've actually i've never experienced somebody in real life uh that gives me this feeling but when i'm watching crime shows or documentaries like that and they show a picture on the screen of the person I find myself unable to actually look at the person's eyes because I feel like I can connect with their energy um, because that's actually how I got started with these readings as I started doing picture readings. So the person would send me a picture and I would drop their energy. And uh, so I feel like that's something I have to be very careful of when I'm watching crime shows or murder documentaries or things like that because when they show the picture up, and I look at it, I, I almost can connect with the energy just through that, which is um, a little overwhelming sometimes. So, uh, This has nothing mm. to do with anything, but why do women like these crime shows so much? Like, everybody, <laughs> just about everyone I speak to, oh, I'm looking at ID Discovery. Oh my gosh, did you see how they mer you know, What is wrong with you guys? <laughs> I I think it's interesting because I want to see if I can figure out, you know, who did it, if they haven't solved the murder. Or, uh, I, that's something that I would love to get into eventually is like psychic police work and see if I can pick up on actual Ooh. things for, you know, crimes and stuff that are unsolved and be useful that way. That hasn't happened yet, but it's definitely on a bucket list of mine. Okay. I hmm. mean, I, I, okay. That's not for me, unfortunately. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't handle it. And um, blah blue just showed up and asked, "Have you looked at Chris Watts?" Um, I have not. I don't even know if I know who that is. Actually, um, the Watts sounds familiar. Who's that? Uh, he's a murderer, and I believe. Oh, he, oh. yeah. <laughs> so what? we'll just keep it simple. Well. <laughs> 
And he also has a question. Um, when you draw up energy from a picture, doesn't the person's presentation alter your perception of them also? Um, so that is something that is really interesting about the way that I kind of do these readings because I almost go into this sort of channeling state where I'm not really seeing the physical picture. I'm just trying to connect to it energetically. Um, so even if, you know, the person, I don't know, I don't know what a good example would be. Like, even if the person showed up and had like a, they were wearing a cross or, you know, there were signs that they were very religious, I might not see, or spiritual, I might not see purple in their aura just because they are showing up that way in the picture. Like, I don't usually see the picture. I'm more using it as a tool to help me connect to them energetically and then I'm receiving the information um, in my mind's eye. So obviously you have to keep judgment out of it um, to be a good psychic and not let your bias in. Okay. How do you do that though? How do you uh, be blinded and neutral like that? Um, years and years of practice. <laughs> years of practice and you know that channeling state that I kind of go into um you you kind of like detach from your judgments or your perceptions of what people look like or or things like that and I'm not really sure how to explain that you just kind of connect to a higher vibration a higher level of energy and then Things go a little bit like fuzzy in your actual physical vision so you can get into a deeper almost meditative state and you leave judgment and bias kind of at the back burner because you're there to connect to the person's energy and you're there to give them healing and that's kind of that's kind of how I look at that I don't know if that's a good answer or not but I hope that that answers that a little well, I think it does and um yeah I'm actually happy you brought up channeling because I'm curious about that and I'm sure many people are. How does channeling work? So, um, well, there's a couple of different ways that people channel and um, it really just depends on specifically how some people work. Um, and when I say channeling state, I kind of just mean I go into a higher vibrational like meditative state. Um, and by doing that and by raising my energy, I'm able to connect easier uh, to, I don't know what I would say, like to source, to spirit, to receive information um, about the person. So channeling, though, when you're like doing that, when you go to get like a reading um, from somebody that is a channeler, they are connecting usually to spirit guides or your higher self or their higher self or um, angels, archangels, like there are many people that channel all sorts of different types of, you know, spirits and stuff. Um, but when that happens, they're, again, raising their energy to connect with that energy. And then they're using either their voice or some form of like automatic writing to receive information and then channel it out on paper or to the person that is sitting with them. So I hope that answers that question okay and have you only channeled human spirits or other things oh yeah um i pretty much only do like spirit guide channeling um because that's what i am comfortable with i always make it my intention only to connect with you know higher vibrational energies you know of love and and everything and i do a lot of protective stuff to make sure i'm not connecting with anything icky um, or dark and um, yeah so I I only connect with spirit guides or um, like my higher self if I needed to give myself some some information um, I have connected with archangels in the past but I don't really work much with them anymore uh, because I'm doing more of the aura reading and psychic reading stuff but but yeah it's definitely a great way to connect and get information it's just Definitely uh, not for beginners because things can go awry with that for sure. Okay. And Blah Blue has a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> so some of them I'm not going to ask um, because earlier in the show we did go over it. So one of his questions is when you see things in your mind's eye, is it black and white? 
the image symbolic or exact or approximate? Is it feeling, knowing, a sense? <laughs> Interesting. That's a great question. Um, I might need to have you read uh, that question again as I go through it. But the first question was, is it black or white? And no, actually, I see images pretty much in full color um, in my mind. So if I was to imagine what a red juicy apple looked like right now, in my mind's eye, I'm seeing that as a red apple with a brown stem and a green leaf off of it you know uh so definitely colors for me um and then what was the second question <laughs> um is the image symbolic exact or approximate i guess in okay. its size and how you see it you know oh, oh the dimensions okay. of it um the, dim the dimensions. Yeah, um, that's what I think he's getting at. Or, I could be wrong, and he could just say, so Melvin, you're a moron. I'm I... <laughs> You know, sometimes <laughs> people get images that are symbolic um, as their way of receiving psychic information. So sometimes I will receive an image that I uh, have to interpret. So it's, an, it's a simultaneous image and then a feeling that comes with it for me usually. So... Let's say I saw a um, like a sunflower or something. So to me, that could mean that the person specifically like talking mediumship readings, um, that the person has a very sunny disposition, that they were very happy. I'll get a simultaneous feeling of a person like happiness and stuff like that. So there's definitely symbols that can come into play for mediumship for more psychic readings i usually get pretty accurate like exact information so i'll see somebody you know getting on a plane or i'll see somebody packing up a house if they're getting ready to move move that's going to happen or i'll see um you know them in their boss's office getting a promotion so it definitely depends on um I don't know, the information that's coming through, but most of the time for psychic readings, it's pretty exact. And then when you get into mediumship readings, it's a little bit more of like a symbolic thing. Okay. And yeah. Nathan, I'm so sorry because I am not going to say that last name because I'm going to butcher it. So we're on a first name basis with you, sir. Nathan, uh, he, he says that I should ask you, um, what type of yoga a person can do for energy flow. So what type of yoga can be done for energy flow? Well, Nathan, thank you so much for sending your question in. Um, so I don't know the specific types of yoga, actually. But I will say that, pra oh gosh, pranayama breathing, I think it's called, um, and doing yoga really changes a person's energy like almost completely i will i will always know when somebody comes in when and they're doing yoga because their energy i kid you not looks like i don't i don't even know how to explain it like colored glass around them almost like it's so pure and clear because they there is something about yoga that just completely balances a person's energy out and I'm not sure like how or why that is, but anytime I'm doing a reading and somebody comes in and they're doing yoga every day, I immediately know. And they ha like are stunned when I bring that up and they're like, how did you know I'm doing yoga all the time? Like it's, it's really interesting the way that it can affect your energy. So if you're wanting to level up your energy a little bit and um, I don't know, just give yourself a better a better clearer aura that's definitely something that you should add into your routine uh Nima, do you do you do yoga i do i dabble um i was gonna say there is one pose that you can do while you're meditating to kind of help you connect and it's basically your palms put together and you put it over your head and then you i think you inhale and you exhale down to your sacral chakra, sacral, and you do that breathing exercise a few times and that kind of helps connect a link to spirit. Okay. I love that, oh my gosh. Yeah. I, uh, I 
only do yoga because it's part of a exercise regime that I'm doing, and I absolutely hate it. I think it's the most painful thing in the world, except for child's bowls. So <laughs> I don't, I don't think I am going to show up with any sparkly glass <laughs> anytime soon. <laughs> Like, I don't oh get it. God. It's supposed to be <laughs> all excited. nice and calming. It's n- no, not for me. I get sweaty and shaking. <laughs> what are you doing? You know, so. That's how I am. I'm like, am I supposed to be screaming right now while I'm doing this? <laughs> so, yeah, kudos to all you yoga people. You're insane. <laughs> um. Okay, and... Nathan has a couple more questions, but again, I'm picking and choosing, you know, power of being the boss here. Grr. Uh, This is a good one, though. How do you know that a spirit you are connecting with is not duping you? As in, they're not good or have no good intentions, but disguise themselves. That is also a really great question, and that is part of the reason why I don't recommend trying to channel when you're a beginner. Um, because you have to have a really um, intense team that is watching out for that for you. So I work with a team of spirit guides that I um, kind of have set up to let me know if a spirit is bad or a spirit is a little bit more, um, I don't know, like iffy or trying to disguise itself. And that is definitely something that... I don't know, that a more advanced person, well, let me think about this, let me think about this. These are good questions. I just feel like I'm not, I I can't word exactly what I want to say. I think really it's just through experience and through trusting that your psychic information and your feelings and your visions and all of this stuff is accurate because... If a spirit did come through to you that was malevolent, you would immediately be able to feel that intuitively. The hairs on the back of your neck would stand up. You would feel a sense of, you know, fear because that's the type of energy that they're closer to um, is fear rather than love. So you're going to feel this innate sense of fear and just kind of you have to go with that. If a spirit shows up and they look like they are an angel but for some reason you have this weird nagging feeling that they aren't good or they have malicious intentions then you need to trust that and not just go based off of you know what you're seeing okay so it a lot of it is feeling and sensing and opening yourself up to that energy to know that something is off and not just yeah. take it at face value because, you know, right. I can come up to you and say, I'm a millionaire and, you know, date me. <laughs> I mean, that's a terrible right. example, but, you know, <laughs> I am not a millionaire. So, yeah. And I feel like, you know, when you're doing this work, you have to be very skeptical. Even if you believe in spirits and you believe in all this stuff, you have to have that skeptical mind or you will get duped by a spirit that is showing up as an angel but is really actually malicious. You have to, you know, almost like have them go through a vetting process of like, all right, so why am I feeling like this is off then if you are saying that you're more of a a good spirit? Like, why am I feeling in the pit of my stomach this this terrible nagging? Um, So, yeah, it's just based off of, I think, your intuition, your own feelings, and also having a good spirit guide team um, that can kind of vet that for you. Okay. Um, And... When you were a rookie and, you know, just getting your feet wet, and this is from Angie, by the way, were you deceived by a spirit? All right. I I will say yes, um, I was. And lucky for me, I have a group, I have a really great local community that I tend to rely on when, when things uh, go awry, especially when I was first getting into this stuff. So they um, kind of, I I went there, I remember going to this little crystal shop uh, near the town that I live in. And I went in there one day and I was just like, man, I've just got this weird feeling about this new spirit that I'm working with. 
and it just doesn't seem quite right. And I went in and I was talking to them about it and they were like, oh yeah, no, that's, that is not something that you should be, you know, messing with or working with. And obviously nothing bad happened. Um, and they were able to help me through that process and everything. And I learned quite a bit from that. Um, but the only reason that I feel like I kind of experienced that was because I was being a little bit uh, risky with some of the things that I was doing and I didn't know how to protect myself properly and I didn't have a really good grasp on my abilities and um, things like that. And it's completely, you know, 180 now from how it was, but that was definitely something that I did experience and I never wanted to experience it again. So I set up very, very strong protection. All right, so two things. One, what were you doing that was risque? And two, how does one protect themselves? Okay, so I won't go into, like, super crazy detail with this, but I basically um, did the Ouija board thing. Um, And (laughs) never again will I do this. So that is how that happened. Um, And... The second thing is protection is kind of a, I don't know, it's like a personal sort of a thing. So when you're starting to do this work, I recommend, you know, using crystals and things like that to kind of help protect you energetically. There are like a couple of main ones that I use, um, rainbow fluorite, peridot, new might and um black tourmaline those are like my go-to ones that i use even to this day still and then there's also you know visualization and calling in your archangels or you know calling in god or jesus or you know whoever you believe in with your own religion and just asking them for extra protection um and and things like that and doing that paired with a visualization is usually pretty strong Um, But when I was younger, I did not really know what I was doing and had no idea that you needed to protect yourself uh, if you were doing Ouija board stuff. Yeah, Uh, we've had a few Ouija people on here. Actually, uh, uh, oh gosh, I can't, how did I forget his name? Darren uh, Evans. Yeah, I think that's his name. Oh my gosh, he's going to slap me if he sees this. (laughs) Um, You know, he... um, he was on Ghost Adventures, wrote a book, The Zozo Phenomenon, you know, that thing. And, uh, um, oh. yeah, so we're, we're familiar with the Ouija board stuff here. This was actually yeah. before mm-hmm. Niema joined up, too. So, huh. Yeah, this wow. was, oh my gosh, this was two, two or three years ago now. Oh, wow. Huh. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I just, it just hit me how long I've been doing this. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I, I totally know where you're coming from with the Ouija board and definitely know what you're doing if you're going to get on that and have your intentions set. Like, you can't... It's the, the best way to put it is it's like a telephone. If you just blind dial, you never know who's going to pick up on the other side. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I would recommend uh, not using a Ouija board ever, <laughs> if possible. <laughs> so, but yeah, I I totally get where you're coming from. Now, at first, though, I thought you were gonna say you did a blood sacrifice or something. You got a black chicken. And oh, you, geez. You, you, you oh, got no! Oh gosh! <laughs> oh, absolutely not! No, no. I'm I'm oh, joking. I am... get away from that stigma, <laughs> Melvin. Ah. I'm joking. I'm not serious. <laughs> I don't think you so do funny. that. <laughs> you'd use a pig um so going on from there um are you familiar with astral travel astral projection and all of that um yes i am have you done it so yes i have done it um i haven't done it the way that people normally do it like I know a lot of people are able to get into a super deep like meditation and then just kind of like roll out of your body or lift out of your body um but I usually do it uh through dreams I'll kind of use that as my stepping stone to to kind of (laughs) astral travel um so yeah that's 
Now, I, I, I bring that up for a very good reason, because I'm going to throw it to Niema for a second. And she has astro-projected, astro-traveled, uh, albeit mm, probably unintentionally. But... A lot. <laughs> yes. Wow. So, what is that like, Niema? Well, I mean, it's just sometimes it can be... Uh you know about that one experience the most recent experience i had was well actually this last recent one i can't say that was actually pretty cool it was nice oh you didn't share but that the previous one, one do you would you like me to um yeah i mean but talk about the previous one then the, the well gosh now i'm confused talk about the one okay that i I'll know talk about the, the dangerous one yes and then we'll ask her some questions about it okay so uh, the last time I, because I usually use a grounding mat on my bed to kind of keep me inside my body because I tend to leave my body pretty frequently and I don't think I protect myself well enough. I just kind of just, it's more like, hey, Ashley wants to leave this world. So I'm just going to go and explore any chance that I get. <laughs> sure. So, <laughs> so the the most recent time I uh, I left my body and I made eye contact with uh, this girl kind of spirit I don't know, and she locked eyes with me and she said, "Ooh, bright tea crystal," and she grabbed me and it felt like she was feeding off of me, like just draining my energy severely, and I was trying so desperately to get away and kind of get back into my body that I actually woke up kind of seizing like wow yeah oh so my gosh. and that was just a very like and that's and I realized I was like I didn't even have my grounding mat on like just out of the blue I had unplugged it to plug in my other charger so my grounding mat was off and I usually wear like a necklace and have the grounding mat on. So I was like, that's what I get. I, I wasn't protected and I tried to go out. But yeah, do you have any advice on um, astral projecting and kind of how to navigate? Absolutely. So I think you are in a great position to um, actually meet your own spirit guides uh, if you're able to do that. Because one of the things about astral projecting is that even if your you know, physical body uh, is protected and you have crystals on and everything once you go out into the astral plane you are pretty vulnerable if you don't have some sort of like protector spirit or somebody kind of with you we're just kind of like floating out in the astral plane just looking for something to do um mm -hmm. and that leaves us very vulnerable so i actually had a negative experience um with astral projection and uh, that led me to working with a kind of uh, spirit guide that's a little bit more rough around the edges. And he is my like main protector guide. And basically what I have him do is that if I find myself in a dream and then I'm astral traveling or doing anything like that, I will either call him to kind of like be there with me or I will uh, have him pull me out of it. And I'll just, I will literally just say, um, you know, please pull me out of this astral projection experience. I don't want to experience that. And then I'll usually wake up. So it's really important to kind of have a spirit guide. In my opinion, I, I would, I think the easiest way to go is to get a spirit guide um, that will help kind of protect you or just connect with your own spirit guides and have them specifically there to protect you when you are astral traveling especially if you're doing it that much like you you are very vulnerable out there um so i would definitely recommend trying to connect with your main guide if you can i don't know if you have already or not but even if you are out next time are you usually like pretty lucid when you do this yeah okay yeah like you mean in control yeah mm -hmm. in a sense or yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, are you able to, you know, think thoughts or uh, control where you go and things like that? Uh, yeah. 
No, I don't think I'm that lucid. I think it just happens to where I am where I am. And then sometimes I'll have thoughts like, oh, okay, I want to go here. Like the most recent one was like that. And I did that. But then, uh, I explain. but I was able to like think in my dream, like, hey, I want to go here. And then I went there. That's Okay. Does that count? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that totally. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm what I'm talking about. I think that it would be a really cool experience for you to make your intention that the next time you're going to astral travel or astral project, um, that you're going to use that to meet your spirit guide because they can connect with us easier on that plane. And then when you have that intention to connect with your spirit guide, they'll usually show up, and you might actually be able to see them full form because you'll be on the actual like astral plane where they can show up like physically um since everything is energy out there so i would definitely try doing that because if you can connect with them they'll be able to protect you a lot better when you're out there than you know just going in (laughs) kind of open and and vulnerable to whatever's out there okay so set an attention before i go Okay, cool. Yeah, I would say before you go to bed, if you just have a feeling that you're going to project that night or travel, um, yeah, just, you know, kind of put that out there. All right. Um, and uh, Blah Blue has another question, and it's a good one, which I don't think is actually possible to answer, but I'm going to ask you anyway, Jackie. Where okay. is the astral plane? Is it in the present, past, future, other planet, other galaxy, other dimension? So I will give you what I believe it to be. Um, And I'm not saying this to be 100% true. I'm not saying this to, you know, tell you that this is the exact correct information. Because honestly, yeah, that's a really hard question to answer. But from what I've kind of um, understood it to be is it's a different plane of existence so if you can kind of imagine um earth as like oh yeah yeah i'll use that i'll use that analogy earth is and and physical existence as we know it right now um as we're sitting in our chairs or we're listening to this podcast this is the physical earth plane of existence so that's you know the ground floor of an apartment building Then you go up to the first floor of the apartment building, and that is what I consider the astral plane. Okay, so that's where we are, you know, in our energetic form. We can travel. We can do all of these things. um, But we're still close enough to that ground floor that if we look out the window of the first floor, we can see the ground floor. (laughs) I hope that makes sense. Um, So then you get into other stuff like, you know, where is heaven or the other side and all that stuff and that's you know way at the top of the apartment building in my belief um so yeah i kind of look at it as planes of existence obviously there's it's kind of more like i don't know like um the energetic part of the earth plane basically so we've got the physical plane where we are right now and then we've got that energetic part where um we can access you know things that are on the earth but we can also go out into other planes of existence i hope that's that's just kind of like what i believe um there's a lot of different theories out there though on the astral plane and and stuff about that so i'm sure if you did a little search you would find so much more information about it well it makes a it makes a lot of sense to me it's actually something similar to what i say and Nima might remember this or might not it was a while ago but we had a show where we were talking about uh uh the multiverse and it being possible universes and dimensions and how a uh, parallel dimension of course it's side by side and um did i say parallel dimension yeah parallel dimension yeah side by side and then you have higher dimensions, which goes up and down. And I always use a elevator as an analogy. And I always say that, you know, it could be 12 floors or whatever. And right now we're on the third floor, the physical plane. And the higher you go, the more, uh, the, the more distance you have from that physical area. And, you know, you get to your heaven or your astral realm or whatever. 
you know, so it makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. I like the mm-hmm. elevator analogy. I I also kind of think that there's just things out there that we're never going to be able to fully explain until we start to kind of delve into, uh, I don't know, like researching it with science and stuff. I think that we're always going to have these questions of like, are there other dimensions? Are there other planes of existence? You know, how many are there? And is there, a, you know, a par- parallel universe to this one? Or are there many? So that's a good question, though. Uh, Jackie, this is going to bring us to something else that I hope you'll be able to expand on. So you mentioned several times your spirit guides. How can one reach out and find their spirit guide, hear them, interact with them? How, how can a person do that? So honestly, it is as easy as setting your intention that you want to connect with them. Um, But a lot of people have this expectation that their spirit guide is just going to show up physically um, and they're going to see them and they're going to be able to hear them like we can hear each other right now. And it really is not like that. It's, It's definitely a more energetic experience and more of an energetic exchange than a physical one. So I would say set your intention that you want to meet your spirit guide um, and, you know, using a tool uh, like Oracle cards or tarot cards to start to connect with them or connecting with them in meditation and doing a meet your spirit guide meditation on YouTube. There's so many of them out there. Uh, That's a kind of a good way to start to get in touch with them, but making sure that your expectations are realistic about uh, when they do show up, it'll probably be more of a subtle feeling or a subtle, you know, smell or color or um, a knowing that they're with you. So there's definitely a couple of different ways to do it. But I think that the best way is meditation and using um, like an Oracle card deck or a tarot card deck. Okay, so that's funny you mentioned that. Um, uh, because let's see. Niema, was it the pendulum we were using for you when I think we connected with your guide? Or or did I have the yes, tarot deck out? Uh, Maybe it was both. Like it, was a, it was both. <laughs> it was both, yeah. So it, it's funny you say that because I think we connected with her guide and um, I think she is Celtic, I think. Wow, and that's awesome. And then on my side of things, because, you know, me being a Taurus, apparently I'm stubborn. And, um, <laughs> and I was speaking one night with Bonnie. And I told this story before, so I'll, I'll go quick, guys, in case you've heard it. And you're like, ah, win back, Melvin, stop it. So I was speaking with Bonnie one night, <laughs> and we were talking about aliens, of all things. And my guy somewhat popped up but then she didn't pop up uh and she used something else to catch my interest and when it caught my interest it's like okay i kind of want to know more about this now and bonnie was walking me through on how to meditate which uh meditate doesn't work a type of sleep state works not meditation and um (laughs) I remember I was doing it, and I heard her. Uh, The name was Pearl, and I can never forget that. I I heard her say, Pearl, and she was yelling. (laughs) So it's like, "Uh uh-oh, I'm in trouble. That's so funny. Yeah, so... That's awesome. So, yeah, I know there's that one. And then the other one, his name is Raphael, and I actually saw him. Um, I, um... I, I was video chatting with Angie, and I don't know what we were doing. I, I might have been messing around with my pendulum, and I saw him on the right, my my shoulder on the right side, and Angie saw this, she can testify to it because of my reaction, and I looked to my right side, I was like, what the, and I, you know how when something startles you, you jump? Mm-hmm. That's what happened. I jumped like, whoa, what, and I'm looking around and everything, and I, I mean, yeah, I saw him from the computer screen. That and you know, he 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 was all white. 
like white hair, <laughs> very pale white face. Uh, his eyes were very, very, very intense, very intense eyes. And yeah, I mean, it, it was crazy. That was one of the most interesting things that's ever occurred. That's so weird. As you're talking, I feel like I just had an image flash in my mind <laughs> of like what he looked like. I wonder if I could draw that and send it to you because I would be interested to see if that was who you saw as well because I've never seen somebody um, that looks like that before pop up in my mind's eyes. So well, I, we'll have to talk after this. I, I won't give you all the info then, but yeah, definitely go for it. <laughs> really interesting wow that is so cool a lot of people it takes a long time for them to be able to connect with their guides like that so you are very lucky to have heard a name too oh Everybody no the, and even the third one i actually kind of saw the third one as well um she and i heard her i actually got her name mixed up her name is daisy but i heard pixie and saw flower and all that i anyway that's the story but her name is daisy and she actually popped up with uh, everyone has seen a camera flash right so yeah. yeah think of like a million camera flashes but condensed in a small ball and it like pops and it's blinding it's so intense and then it woo, uh, uh, vanishes wow that's so. so interesting. That is definitely a way that spirit guides show up, too. I've had somebody else uh, kind of describe that similar, like a similar experience to that. Hmm. Okay, so I got to go back to a question uh, from Angie. And she, what did she say? Oh, I'm going to have a lot of editing here. Okay. She asks, what if you're unable to meditate? It's uh, it's quite tiring that people always say it. Melvin can tell you how impossible it is for me to meditate, and it's very frustrating. So hmm. my advice, so this happens a lot. Um, I barely ever recommend <laughs> meditation now uh, when I do my aura readings because people usually will answer that way, which is totally understandable. It's, it can be very difficult when you're first starting out um, to meditate, but... What I would say to that is to trick your mind into um, meditating while doing an activity. So a lot of people believe meditation is, you know, sitting quietly and stilling your mind and trying not to think about anything. And really what it is, is it's just being present in the moment. And a really easy way to do that um, is to just like draw or doodle like a lot of artists get into a meditative state when they're doing some form of art um or if you are i oh my god i meditate when i wash the dishes you know you just go into that relaxed state where you're focusing kind of on your breathing and you're not like thinking about everything uh that has gone on throughout the day you're just kind of in the present moment washing the dishes so, so that's that's what meditation is. And we, we blow it out of proportion and make it this huge thing of like, you have to sit still for 20 minutes and clear your mind and not think of anything and all this stuff. And really, it's as easy as doodling on a piece of paper for five minutes or um, coloring in, you know, a coloring book page or doing something to give your mind a break. That's that's really all it is. Okay, that, yeah, that makes sense. Don't make it a bigger thing than it is. Or, you know, I'll I'll say what I'll uh, what I do. I get super sleepy, <laughs> and that's when I open up. <laughs> so it's like, well, no, because okay, maybe it's just me. I don't think it is. But haven't you guys ever been in that stage of sleep where you're you're half out, but you're somewhat aware and you start hearing like voices and like almost like it's a party going on and and you hear talking, but it's like in the background, like right before you're about to go to sleep. Yeah, that's when we're almost like the most open uh, because you're finally giving your mind a break to kind of settle down and then we start to open up. Uh, that's a really common experience, too. So it's really interesting that you say that. Yeah. So that's, you know, I think that's the time if you're able to keep some awareness. <laughs> like That's when you go and shoot in. <laughs> I mean, it might be a one minute window of opportunity, but darn it, take it. <laughs> 
Hmm. But uh, yeah, I do know that people struggle with meditation like Angie. And I think a, a big part of it has to do with overthinking. And, you know, I'm fortunate enough to where I'm a slow thinker and not much happens in this head anyway. You know? <laughs> and well, I mean, I, it sounds like it's a bad thing, but really it, it's a good thing because I'm stress free for the most part. And I know that it's just something that takes time and, you know, don't try to go for hours. Like you said, Jackie, don't, don't do that. Two, three, four, five minutes, whatever you can do, even if it's 30 seconds, you know, take that as a victory. Like, all right, 30 seconds today, I felt something kind of warm and yeah, then go from there. Absolutely. But we are going to wrap it up. Jackie, why don't you tell us, where can we, if, if someone wants a reading from you, where can we go to get that? So um, they can go to etherealjack.com, which is E-T-H-E-R-E-A-L-J-A-C.com, or um, find me on my YouTube page, with, which is Ethereal Jack, and everything is pretty much connected to my website. My All my socials are there. So, yep, you can go there and book a reading with me if you're interested. Okay, and what type of readings do you offer? So I mainly offer the aura readings um, over Zoom. So we would connect for an hour and I would read your energy, give you um, basically like a drawing of your energy at the end of the session. And I go through and I explain what the colors mean, what the shape of the aura means. And I go through and check all the chakras to see if there's any imbalances or anything. Um, And if there is, I usually give some sort of advice on how to fix it uh, right then and there. And you can use whatever I recommend in like, you know, 20 minutes after the session is over. It's always really down to earth advice. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the main, the main reading I offer. And then I do have um, psychic readings available as well through email or through Zoom. Okay. So there we go. Straight from the (laughs) psychic medium's mouth. All right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is where we're gonna end it. Uh, Nima, do you have anything coming up that you want to talk about real quick, or you're good? Uh, no, I just have a sale going on on my website, so anything over fifty dollars gets a twenty percent off discount. Okay. So www.thirdeyemystic.com. All right, and jackie thank you so much for coming on and joining us yes thank you thank you so much for having me it was so much fun really appreciate you guys having me on no we appreciate you dropping those knowledge bombs man it was awesome (laughs) Mm -hmm. thanks thank you so and guys once again go to ethereal jack's youtube page go to ethereal jack's website go to readings by jackie on facebook just do it Book a reading. It's going to be awesome. You won't regret it. She's very nice. (laughs) Thank you. And also, thank you guys for watching. Very much appreciate it. Remember to hit that subscribe and like button. And also remember to follow Unexplained Possibilities on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and Instagram. Those links can be found in the description below. With all that said, remember guys... There are things that go bump in the night. Go ahead and tell them hi. Bye, everybody.